So if we, if we look at the role of uh, pharmacotherapy for bipolar, we have uh, 19 approved treatments now, 19 indications, and 10 are for acute mania. There's only two for bipolar depression and seven for preventive treatment. So the main unmet need is bipolar depression because we only have two indicated treatments. And not only are there too few treatments for bipolar depression, uh, both of these treatments have a component that is a second generation antipsychotic that has side effects. So for the olanzapine fluoxetine combination, it's primarily weight gain that can lead to metabolic problems. And at least in the short term for quetiapine, it's sedation. And so we, we need to try to find something that's better tolerated. And if you have a tolerability first approach, you might think of using something different. And a lot of clinicians vote with their feet and try to use antidepressants. And uh, in my view, they're well tolerated physically. So you, you hit that point that you want to hit, but they don't get the job done on mood. Okay, so they don't separate from placebo. Uh, another one is this anticonvulsant lamotrigine that's uh, good enough at delaying depression, but it falls just short of the mark at reversing an acute depression. And so its tolerability is just fine, but its, um, it, its effect size in treating the acute bipolar depression was just a hair less than it was necessary, so it didn't get an indication. There are some new anticonvulsants on the horizon. And if you look at the time from getting an epilepsy indication to getting a mood disorder indication, this can be decades some of the time. And so how can we tell if these new anticonvulsants are going to be useful? Well, several of them have warnings for behavioral toxicity. And the, the, uh, the most severe would be like a box warning for you know, homicidal ideation or something like that. And so if, if an anticonvulsant has that kind of warning, then it might not be a good idea for a mood disorder patient.